why Ghana is not being given that platform to also shine internationally. I mean, we even saw a tweet from someone who manages one of the biggest artists in Ghana, and he was talking about Nigerian gatekeepers who were blocking, um, you know, Ghanaians and their ability to shine. His name is Chief Styles, and he's a manager for Stone Boy. Stone Boy was supposed to perform at Afro Nation on Sunday, just this past Sunday in Detroit. I mean, it was hyped. Everybody was expecting him to get on stage. And then for some reason, he just did not appear. And Chief says he was very upset about it. Stone Boy equally was upset about it. So that night, he couldn't sleep and decided to go ahead and put something out. Usually, he won't speak, but he said he just could not keep it in. So he posted on his Instagram story saying... There's an ongoing silent war against Ghana music actively spearheaded by some Nigerian gatekeepers. They don't want to see Ghana anywhere close to the global success of Afrobeat. Yesterday, he spoke to us exclusively on Twitter space. We're trying to see if we could get that audio, but it's quite lengthy um, with him explaining why Stoneboy did not perform. Initially, Stoneboy was supposed to have performed in the afternoon at 320 they said it was too early. In fact, they got the lineup the day before. That's Stone Boy's management. When ideally, it should have been sent to them earlier for them to discuss. It came in quite late. He was supposed to perform in the afternoon, and they said they were not comfortable with him performing in the afternoon because it was hot, and the crowd wasn't really there. So they tried to shift his time to later in the evening. We can play a bit of that audio if it's possible. Coco, is that possible? Okay. Well, just before we play, let me introduce my guest to you this morning and we have Amayal Debra. he's a freelance journalist and blogger he'll be joining us via zoom Baba Sadiq media and entertainment entrepreneur he'll also be joining us via zoom but in the studio this morning we have Joshua Raphaelson we all call him JMJ Jam Master J he's a music producer and an executive producer as well good morning, good morning. how are you I'm, doing I'm good you're looking good thank you thank you for coming back ah. this shows that you are not upset with me at all <laughs> <laughs> For our last conversation. Oh, no, no, no. You're yeah, forgiving good. me. We're good, we're good. We're good? We're good. Thank you. We're good, good to see you. Good to see you. And we also have Koka. He's a showbiz critic. And, of course, when it comes to stage plays, he and Uncle Ebo White, they go in the same direction. <laughs> they really understand the system. But he's also very, um, you know, passionate about music and the yeah. arts in general. Yeah. Charlie is saying, we have a call. We did. It's the same. Why black black? I'm yeah, worried. Oh, I went for the mass for Jane. Oh, it was yeah. today. Yes, there was oh. a mass, so I went. Is she resting? Yeah, St. Teresa's, yes. Yeah, this week hasn't been too great. Yeah. But anyway, can we listen to what Stone Boy's manager said? Or maybe let me just go ahead and narrate. So he says that, you know, they tried to shift the time to later in the evening for him to perform after 10. That was around 5.20. And then he had a chiropractor appointment because he had a problem with his back. So he went to see the chiropractor, came back. Tenny didn't perform on time, so that also shifted the time a little back and but he was still ready to perform and they told him that he cannot go on stage for some reason they can only allow 10 minutes dj time for him and so they got upset and decided they weren't going to perform anymore and that is why his manager posted this again he says there's an ongoing silence war against ghana music actively spearheaded by some nigerian gatekeepers they don't want to see ghana anywhere close to the global success of afrobeats gmj this conversation about Ghana and Niger and the competition that's, you know, ongoing. In one leg, even, a, you know, Benna Boy is talking about Afrobeat and saying it's really not, it's just a vibe. It's not a serious music genre, you know. But we're here and we're waging war, directly or indirectly, over who owns Afrobeat and who should get that platform. What do you have to say about this? Um, first of all, um, the issue regarding Stoneboy and then... And, and the organizers, um, I, I think such stuff do happen. It would be a little uninformed of me to not know all the narratives and then just jump into conclusion and say that it was deliberate or it was a mistake. Mm. But um, a big event like that, uh, there definitely will be a lot of time to prepare, plan. I mean, a whole lot of details who have to be sent to you to coordinate. So what happened today coming to do dress rehearsal, yeah. I mean, ahead of time. And if there was any problem, it was not brought to the attention of them until it was time for them to come on stage. Yeah. I mean, so, yes, so there are a few questions you want to ask. And I would perfectly buy into how his manager feels because they must have put a lot into that yeah. event, investment, gone down and then it kills your morale, your, art, your fans are also expecting to see you and then it's a whole lot, I get that bit. But 
um, sometimes I would also want to play, I also want to be a little bit fair. I've seen Stone on that stage not once, not twice, mm. not thrice. And that stage is not owned by Ghanaians. We don't own it. Well, there's a Ghanaian who's a key member. Yes, yeah. yes. But then, like I said, we have seen Stone on that stage, not once, not twice, not mm. thrice. From Portugal to name it. He's yeah. been with them all around. Yeah. Even the one in Ghana, he was part of it. So I don't want to be in haste and then just go for the head of the, them that it was well calculated to. I mean, for me to well calculate to pull you down, I won't buy a ticket. Mm. Definitely, they must have transported you there, yeah. get you into a hotel. I just want to feel like, for now, because I don't have the two facts, I don't want to just go saying that, yeah, they deliberate, blah. But he does has all the information. Maybe there are things he, because of political reasons or the business side, yeah. he can put huh. all of them out, but he's so sure that this was done purposefully. So, for now, let me just be a bit discreet in Ghanaian who really is at fault in this conversation. But the whole conversation about Afrobeats mm -hmm. and whether we're lost in this whole genre and it's like the Nigerians are trying to block us from eating a bit of the cake, the mm -hmm. success cake, and the fact that we're not getting any at all. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on that? Because I've heard some pundits say that we're focusing on very useless things. And it's because we also don't have a collective agenda in Ghana. So it's as if everybody is, you know, um, trying to hold on to the straws and etc. I've always hold, you know, um, if we are really close to the industry, mm. you know what's on the ground, the truth, and what's put out there. There's a clear difference. I mean, if I'm a fan, I will probably feel the same way. Mm. But especially being close and knowing how things are done. First, let's, let's once again go back like three years ago. These same people that we're assuming that they own the pie and don't want us to be a part of it, mm -hmm. I can comfortably say held our boy Blacko's hand and push him out there yeah. through one of them. Yeah. True or false, that's true. Mm -hmm. It didn't just end there. He kept his promise taught yeah. with him. And then that opened doors, and now we can actually say that one of our own is also there. Yeah. It didn't end there. There are a couple of names we can actually mention. Mm. As a now that we speak, uh, I see Kim Promise mm -hmm. doing very well. And there is no way I won't give some amount of credit to these very same people we are talking against, mm -hmm. from the likes of Whiskey Association with the Ben, mm -hmm. all of these people. You understand? So maybe our worry is we want more or we want equal share. You don't have an equal share when you don't even know what is behind the wheel that's keeping the whole thing spinning. What is it? It's money. It's money. It's money. That, that thing you're seeing there that is happening in the world, it's not by chance. It's only we as Ghanaians who wait for things to happen to us. Mm. Nothing happens by chance. Mm. Everything is orchestrated. Everything is intentionally planned. Where's the money coming from? Yes, that's the good question. You see, there's, there's, let me, let, let, let's remind, let's, the topic is so broad and we have very little time. So let's just, let me just help. See, one day, some, some people planned that we are going to change the narratives of our country. Mm -hmm. There was a time when you mentioned Nigeria, it was always associated with certain kinds of names. Yeah. Today, when you mention Nigeria worldwide, let's, I, I watched one of their comedians go to, Josh, yes, funny, yeah. and then immediately he mentioned his Nigerian. I saw the host and the MC, everybody started clapping. Yeah. Some few years ago, the story wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. We had a chance where there was a time when you mentioned Ghana, it was Michael Lacey and some few footballers. You don't even know our politicians. You don't even yeah. know where, where we belong to. Yeah. It's a plan. People plan that, you know what, we want to hijack culture. We want to hijack business. We want to hijack and push. Bella, some time ago growing up, there was this dressing called Chris Rock where we turned the jeans back. Oh, okay. You remember those two guys, yeah. Chris Rock, mm. good. And then baggy jeans, yes. Tims. Yes. You thought it just came by mistake. Mm. There's always been a plan that, listen, as we are controlling these people economically, we are going to control them culturally. We are going to, co it's, a, it's, it's an agenda. Yeah. 
But we, the usual side of we, everything should just come by gift. Oh, we deserve it. It's ours. It's ours. And we always, we always just put certain kinds of narratives out there. Bella, there has to be a conscious plan that, okay. listen, we want to push the Ghanaian identity, mm -hmm. which is from looks, food, dressing, culture, all of that. Mm -hmm. How do we intend doing this? How is that going to aid our, our economy? Yeah. Listen, when, when I was giving the example of this crisscross, it got to a point, our youth were all dressing that same way. What does that mean? We're buying those jeans. Yeah. What does that mean? We're dressing like them. What does that mean to them? They had to be important stuff yeah. in. It brings in money. See, like I said one time, I said, this space that we have, any government knows the power behind it, would use it to even change we, our mindset, mm -hmm. and then how the outside people also view us. Right now, when you say Nigeria, you don't really want to talk about the negative narratives yeah. any longer. When you talk about Nigeria, you actually want to say that is Africa. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about fame, it is Nigeria. When you talk about fashion, it's... Do you realize that some time ago, we were all going to South Africa, and then productions mm -hmm. were being done in South Africa, yeah. thrown back to us. One day, these people just wake up that, wait, this is not going to happen mm -hmm. again. And then they said they were going to start. The first thing they did was to say, listen, you are not going to come into our country and then bring commercials that you have produced. Yeah. Once you, you want to get our numbers and sell to them, you are going to reproduce the commercials in our country. That will bring money to our people, yeah. our industry. Yeah. And then they went to the right law enforcement to get this done. Now, do you know what's happened? South Africa is no longer in the, a, a production hub for Africa again yeah. when it comes to entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. You remember some time ago, Big Brother and all of that started. Do you know how come the whole narrative shifted to Nigeria? Mm. And don't forget, like I said, key factor is money. There was a time they were not going to do Big Brother in South Africa yeah. for like three, four years. Mm -hmm. And people were making noise. What's going on? Do you know what was happening? They had put two million down that they wanted an investor to pay that money for it to happen. Guess who did? A Nigerian woman paid it. And once that is done, you want to tell the owner of that show how he should, go. How he should run it? So they are investing money. They are investing yes. money because they have a plan. Coca. Do we have people who have the money here? We Why don't have money. Don't even worry, my brother. We don't have that kind of money. You are saying that, but I'll play an audio where Stone no. Boy says that people who have the money, but they don't understand. Baba Baba Sadiq has also joined us it via Zoom. Baba, thank you so much for joining us. We'll come to you shortly. Bakoka, do we have the money? The money is there. He says it's not there. Yes, no. because he has the experience. I, I think um, I've marketed and sold creative as to the extent that I know how to get the money yeah. and who to get the money. Our biggest problem, and as Stoneboy said, it's true. But he also said something. Musicians want investors to give them money mm -hmm. and they want to control how the narrative and what the song should go and it will never happen. That is a disrespect. That is why the guard is there. You think people are not interested in our music? Mm -hmm. Why is it that December is the biggest festival in Africa. Well, for now, yes. the Nigerians are already looking for ways to get yes, into it. but they're doing, you see, he's saying that's luck. And mm -hmm. it's true. We always want it to be luck. Yes, it has been luck. Nigeria is struggling to do the same thing because their environment is not giving them the room to do that. Um, politics, mm -hmm. um, instability, their security, security yeah. in terms of this Boko Haram and yeah. other things, even their electricity. It's not stable. But today, if we want people to invest, they will do. Mm. Our Ghanaian know our music is her life. Our Ghanaian know our music to be hip life. Not Afrobeats. Afrobeats is about that. When Fela was doing Afrobeats, our big boys were there mm. already. Mm. Fela was competing with a lot of people. Yes, they have reinvented it because they saw that that is what they have. And just as uh, uh, um, one of their presidents decided that, I am giving you this amount of money. This is the narrative I want us to go. Can we do that here? Mm. Do we even value the returns? I've always said that music, movie, food, and fashion is the road if we want to make money. We have not still understood that 
the music we are ch chasing, it is not our market. Even that, Asaka did a show. Mm -hmm. Everybody is lambasting our artists about. How many of those same artists mm -hmm. who are performing in, in, in outside are performing in Nigeria? Our artists are here playing free shows. Our artists are here waiting for only December to release a song and play free shows. That's not a fair statement to, to say because the artists have been releasing. Uh, Somebody released a whole album. Kim Promise has yes, that is why That is why he's doing something because you have... When you want to play a show, he's a producer, he will tell you, you need content. Boss, Adelai, mm -hmm. you release one single and you want somebody to pay you almost 100000 to come and stay there and come. Why? It's the money for NGO purposes. We need to understand that there is a conscious effort. Okay, I want to release an album. Who is my target? I want investors. How would that benefit that market I want to tap? Mm -hmm. If the investor comes in, am I ready to diversify? Am I ready to allow him in so that it becomes a win-win? We don't do that in musical. I have seen a Nigerian writing a song telling me who the market is. Okay. Telling me the person investing is saying that he's going to market to A, B, C, D. So even the words he's using, he's deliberate about them. And he's using certain technologies that resonate with that market. We don't do it. We sit here and say, it's a vibe, it's a vibe. It's a reason you have one single, the year will end and you don't do anything. They say it's because they don't have funding. You hold on. Let's just play that audio where Stoneboy is talking about bank rollers. He seems to have a lot of them around him, but he still complains that they are only there for the fun of it, but not ready to invest their monies. Take a listen. Somebody to share. Artists are sharing that part of the bread. Uh, citizens are sharing the part of the bread. Promoters are supposed to share that part of the bread. You know what I'm saying? At least I can mention these three, you know. So it's not an artist business only. And as much as it's looking, it's the artist name that will lead. But if you look behind, yeah. there's a post. If you like, go and see Asake's post. Or go and see the PR yeah. of Asake, Alexa Ray, at Empire. When you click, you see she mentioned a million people. I mean, literally, like, just, just for lack of a better word, a million people who made it possible. When you click, you see entertainment lawyer. You see promoters at different levels. You see investors. You see, you see A and R's. You see, so, you see, the thing that makes the success of an artist on a global stage is broader than what we think. What we think as mm. a people and what we know as an industry. You have all these people on your team. Of course. Put it down. And let's see, those that we lack, we are working to still put in. Okay, guess what? The bigger the machine, the bigger mm -hmm. the engine. At this level that okay. we are now, right? What we can afford is what we will buy. Mm -hmm. What we can afford is what we are buying. Don't you see? Yes, we have these people on my team. And what we want to achieve, owing to the highest levels there be, we are willing and are continuing to be able to hire and employ as and when we can. Because guess what? This is also business. Even, even government have to go and, and take loans. Government need financiers. And I tell you that this is that part of the situation where we, we don't have, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ghanaians mm. don't really have support financially because I believe that the understanding is not convincing enough for bank rollers mm. to be able to fit behind us to be able to be able to hire all these arms and all these people that make things work at the biggest level. But, but you see, we have bank rollers that know a lot of you guys and have very close relationships with you guys. These are our senior men that have money that you guys see around us. I can tell you it's mostly mm. for the fun of it. What business do they have to do with us? They are businessmen in their regards. Real estate gurus, oil gurus, it's just nice to have an artist around us and when they even qualify to be around once and once. You know, they may do you a good here and there. But what I'm telling you vividly and point blank is that it is not convincing enough to them to be able to put their monies behind the business. So we need some of them to tell us, look, I have, had, I have one of them, one of them. Tell me some of the things that I'm surprised to even hear. Some of them don't really have an idea 
about how some of them don't even have the passion. They only see the, you know, the fun part of it. And hey, come, I'm telling you point blank. Some of them, when they get to you, yeah. they're smiling with you because the next thing they're going to say is, hey, you know, yeah, would you give me some girls? You know, you, you know, you have all the girls. Hey, all your videos, those five girls. All right, so that's Stone Boy, and it was quite a lengthy conversation. You can go onto the TV3 page on Twitter or the 3 Entertainment page on Twitter, and you can get a download of the entire conversation. But, Koka, I'll come to you shortly before I go back to um, Sadiq. But this is what he's saying, that these men, they have the money, but they don't even understand the system enough to want to invest their monies. So who... we? That's why I keep saying that we say we have gatekeepers in Ghana, and I've always said that we don't have gatekeepers. Because a gatekeeper is supposed to be the collaborator, the one who is able to sell your product mm -hmm. to the investor and let the investor understand that this is the breaking point. You want to attend it. So I'll use theater. We know if we want to influence families, it should be in the play. It should be comical. It should be fun and everything. Put the messages there let them resonate to the people, get the client to appreciate and say, fine, by doing this, this is how much it will cost. What are the timelines for the returns? This is it. Until we are able to do that, they will see us as entertainers. Okay. They will see us because we have never even shared a document. And one big mistake, we keep assuming we have the market, we know our people, so they should just give us the numbers, money. But... You need to navigate well, gradually bring the person, expose, because it's huge financial base we are talking about. Yeah. It is not one time. You need to expose them and gradually plug in and let them know. We consistently, when they come in, then we play games. So there is always the, the holding back factor. What kind of games do we play? Ah, we are not honest with the things we say we'll do. We're not honest? Yes. You know that for a fact? Boss. Okay. It'd be live for the industry. Let inside. me bring Baba Sadiq in because I would have thought that when you were talking about gatekeepers, you mentioned him as one of the gatekeepers. But you say we don't have any we don't gatekeepers. Have Baba gatekeepers. Sadiq, do we have gatekeepers in this industry? And thank you for joining us on the show this morning. Baba, can you hear me? Uh, Bella. Yes. Good morning. Yeah. How, good morning. How are you? I'm I, fine. I how are you doing? Ah, well, I've been well. Congrats been on well. your events with Olive the Boy. We'll come to that shortly. But do we have gatekeepers in the industry who can be the collaborators between the artists and the bank rollers? Because Hello. Stoneboy is saying they are not ready to spend. Well, I mean, I think that Stoneboy diagnosed the challenges for industry very well uh, in the sense that, I mean, and I pick his words exactly when he says that the bigger the ambition, the bigger the machinery. You know, the challenge has always been um, the lack of. Bye bye, there. Okay, well, Zoom, so it would happen. We'll see um, and then obviously. Oh, yeah. Baba, we lost you, so just come back to that. Yes, we can hear you now. I'm saying that, I mean, Stoneboy is also right in a lot of ways. Um, um, and I take his words directly where he says that um, the bigger the ambition, and there's a need to have a bigger machinery. Um, the challenge has always been assessing the much needed investment to invest in the bigger machinery that can truly break um, a Ghanaian artist to become a global um, star as much as possible. And of course, the other part about it is that, yes, we have people that have money in the market um, that are in other areas, uh, but they seem to truly get their head around um, investment for creative industry um, um, to the level that it, 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 ought to be, it ought to be done. Mm. You know, and so sometimes... Um, um, it's hard convincing them. Yes, I mean, and to disagree with um, Kuka, there's a lot of documents flying around on the business cases that have been made for a number of artists to people that have the money, but sometimes maybe they are not so interested in investing in creative industry as much as the industries where they thrive. Why? You know, and that's, well, that's a bit of a challenge. It's not, it's not everybody that wants to diversify their investments. I mean, if the person is doing well in real estate and real estate is giving him the returns, mm. it's not everybody that wants to be bold enough to say, I just want to um, diversify into an area I'm not too comfortable or I don't understand too much of. But we, you know, see, and we, we see them hanging out with some of these artists. 
jamming to their music. We see videos and yeah, photos. Somebody, somebody, somebody diagnosed a challenge well and said sometimes it's for the vibes, sometimes it's because they like the music, sometimes it's because, oh yeah, we want you around, um, come to us and all of that. And sometimes they, they are friends to these talents and then they, they, they give them, they dash them gifts, mm -hmm. you know. But in terms of, the look, Bella, if you need the machinery, that can break a talent to a global um, audience. It's a yeah. huge machine. The investment is not a walk in the park. Mm. It is not a walk in the park. And the reason why in the last few years, um, the likes of Empire, Sony, Columbia, mm -hmm. and then now Full Circle mm -hmm. are beginning to take a look at some of these things is also because um, it's a void that is there. Truly understanding and truly being able to turn around the money is but very important. You understand? And the Sonys and the Empires, that's their business and they have the money. That's their business. They understand the business. And for them as well, they've built um, a global machinery that's easy to plug into. They've spent years investing in a global machinery from Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Japan, USA. Yeah. They have partnerships with the AEGs. They have partnership with Live Nation. And so um, they, have, they have a well-oiled machinery with individuals actively running it, mm -hmm. you know, and this is a huge operation, Bella. It's a huge, it's almost as if, you see the way TV3, the corporate from the back end, the way it's yeah. running, right? Yeah. You need such a machinery to be able to break an artist to the world. And how much is that? Check a look at the invest, the, the, the expenses or the cost lines for TV3 in a year. Mm. I mean, I, I, if I won't be mistaken, I don't think it will be anything less than 20 million cities a year in terms of the expenses. You know, so it's a it's a huge operation um, that requires not just like a dip to say, oh, I'm, I'm just giving it's all it's all a few hundred thousand dollars conversation. It's not a two hundred thousand dollars conversation. It's not a three hundred thousand dollars conversation. Mm. You know, at best, it should be anything more than three, um, two or two or three million thousand, um, three, two or three million dollars um, conversation. It's a big conversation. It's not easy to break an artist to the world. First and foremost, it's actually not easy breaking through a talent within his primary market and its yeah. connections in diaspora. And then when you've done that, consolidating it requires a lot of investment. And that's where a lot of the talents earn my respect where on. Mm. Okay. Well, technical challenges there as well, but if he comes back, we'll, we'll come into it, but he's brought up a point. And yesterday, um, I don't know if he's back, but if he comes up, we'll let him continue. But yesterday, Ludwig also joined us, and Ludwig is also very influential in the industry in the UK. You know, he said something very important that yes, sometimes that he's break out here, and they think that is enough to just go on tour exactly. in the UK exactly. and in America. But what the Nigerians are doing that we are not doing, so they've realized that the UK artists are also loved and they have the following, so they are collaborating with them exactly. and they are actively getting their music exactly. on replay on their radio stations. So by the time you realize the co collaboration is working, their music is constantly playing, and then when they go to the UK to do a concert, they have the backing of the UK music industry. We don't do that, but we get up one day and we say, we're going on tour in the UK, and one minute we're here in Nottingham, the next minute we're here, and we don't get the numbers, and that's the problem. Well, Sadiq is back. Let me just let him land on this, and maybe you had this um, angle as well. You can speak to that, and I'll come to GMJ. So, Bella, yeah, um, the point is that, Bella, can I can you hear, hear you. Yes. So, yes, I mean, Ludwig is right. It's a whole operation. That's why I say to you that. Um, for, let's say, Ashake, for instance, because of Empire's investment and Empire's assets, Ashake's show was produced by AEG. AEG is one of the two biggest live companies in the world. Mm. I mean, with... Um, um, okay, well, Zoom is quite a problem. GMJ, maybe I'll let you come in on this one. Um, let's, let's, let's start... I think let's, I don't even know if we really want to solve the problem because we've been having a lot of conversations yeah. and it's been over and over and over. And we are the only people I see when a house is, our house is trying to collapse, we go and roll the top and, and we we'll leave the foundation. The foundation. Yeah. We, we, we always major in the minor and then we, we, we've never gotten a right. Anytime we, you see us doing anything right, it's by luck. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned. Mm. So we can't even share the blueprint. See, 10, 15 years ago, when the Fourees were ruling, if we knew what they were doing right, we should be able to replicate that blueprint as mm. of now. Mm. But back again, because it was luck, 
we can't hold it. Mm. Bella, it's very simple. Like he said, if a Ghanaian song is blowing here, you need to connect to the next audience. Yeah. Like Sadiq said, it takes money to do that connection. Mm. Even most of our artists that blow here was not market intentionally planned for it to blow. Yeah. It so just by happened luck. by luck. So once you start that, the next country, luck can't blow it there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does, but not all the time. We'll be here and Nigerian will introduce a new artist. Less than six, five months, they are all over. Yeah. And then they can actually duplicate the same thing over and over. We can. After Black Hole, mm -hmm. then came uh, this boy who has issue with uh, my brother Kiwa. Mr. Then, Drew? Yes, then uh, Sadek's new guys that they just moved. Yeah. Look at the time frame that it took before they stay came. It should not be so. It, it, we have a bunch of artists that even within every three months, we should be able to be seeing new faces. And not just within here, but once they blow here, the system is it's ready to put process. them once to the next level. You translate but you them see, to the other platforms. This is what happens. It takes a chunk of money to sit down, call industry players. Listen, we've just signed these new artists. We believe it's this, is that. This is his direction. This is the narratives behind him. This is where we want to go. Mm. We have a bank ruler behind him. We have X amount of money. Let's start finding out the right plugs to move this guy to the next level. Mm. That's money. We are pocket labels like me, like Kewa, like mm -hmm. Richie. We don't have $2 million in our account that we could call the likes of Babasa. They can tell them, listen, we want plugs here, we want here, we want here, we want here. How much does it cost to move this artist to that level? We always are below, we are not, let's not even discuss our costs here. But you've been in the industry for so long. How and are I'll, you not able to make that amount of money? And I'll tell you for a fact, <laughs> the Ghanaian, like Stumbo was saying, our big men, they just like hanging around our guys. Mm. Sometimes, too, I believe it's because our guys, too, don't sell themselves well to them. Yeah. Okay. Because, because, first of all, like Sadek also said, if I'm into real estate and I'm doing well, it could come as a fear for me to go in. Because artists, their gestation period and, I mean, two, three years is off. Mm -hmm. I've gone down $5 million. And the next thing the artist says is on leave. He's done that. He's done that. He doesn't want to continue. Charlie, businessmen don't hear those kind of conversations. But that's why they're contracts. Yes. But that's why I'm saying that artists but here, they don't understand mm. that kind of language. Mm. They... In fact, when you, when they call any artist on this your show, ask him that how is the industry doing? Listen to him carefully. When he's talking, he's talking about day artists. Mm -hmm. They only know day artists as the industry. Yes. They don't even realize that it's a 360. It's a collection of professionals within a space that makes an industry. Mm. They only when when those, you say, oh, they don't respect us, they don't pay us for well, always S. 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 And it takes another person to go and call a bank roller down, put up a proposal, and convince him that, listen, within five years, we are going to rip X amount of money if we put this in. So if you come and sit on TV and radio, and it's always about, oh, they don't respect artists, they don't pay me well, they don't do this well, then it's about you. Mm -hmm. So nobody wants to be a part of you. Do you know the number of people who are bank rollers for this entity? It doesn't take one person. Yeah. So you just can't come on radio anytime you feel like, and then come and just say anything, forgetting that there are brands associated with you. So your comment would either affect or elevate the brands that are putting money behind you. Now, once again, let me say it. If we really want to change, we need to be intentional that listen. This thing, and they are so itty. Tomorrow we hold a leg, then we, it, it won't work. We don't have a, a collective we, agenda. We don't, even, we don't know where we are going. Don't even use collective. We don't even have an agenda. We have never had an agenda from the one. You see Baba Sadek, he was part of us when we were building Kaki. Mm -hmm. Baba was actually Kaki's manager. Mm. I was, those days, nobody even knew me. I, yeah. I, I never want people to know me. So it was Baba who was fronting. Mm -hmm. Baba would go to label, Baba would go to business people, sell Kaki to them. Go and talk to them. He will tell you how backdoor, what he did. That was the beginning of Baba actually coming into our space. Mm. And if he's to tell you, 
These days, I hear comment people say like, Baba is selling Ghanaian artists out. I understand him. He's tired. He's super, super tired. If you sit with the artists, eh, they'll just be telling about them. Like, they don't even know that, okay, there's a, there's a whole 360s, I mean, pool, yeah. that everybody must function. Because, you see, where we are seated, if this cameraman's stuff is not working well, Bella, yeah, you won't come out system. well. You look everything. But if the focus is only on you, 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 artist, 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 all the time, yeah. nobody will want to Wait. come on board. L let me bring Baba in to respond to this, because then this issue about agenda and not having one, why then are we fighting a whole country that has an agenda and is going on with its Afrobeats? It's as if now we've forgotten all about high life and all the other genres. In fact, now we're even creating new genres. And there are people who have raised concerns about the fact that one minute, one artist says, I'm doing Afrofusion, and that's my agenda. Another one says, I'm doing Ghana Piano. Why is it that we don't take maybe high life or hip life and run with that and push every artist or as many artists to win on that front, Baba? Um, Bella, the issue of agenda, I think we are misdiagnosing it essentially. Okay. Um, listen, that, a coll the collective agenda of an industry where must and would always be built on the individual ambitions of people in industry. Mm. I mean, if we all choose to um, say less and do more and aim for ambition, then it means that we can gradually, gradually build um, 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 a critical base Mm. of different industrial units doing well. I mean, the difference between us and all the markets that have acted is because everybody in their own small way are aiming for the ambition. So you go to the biggest music market, United States, for instance, there are a number of labels owned by the bigger, mega labels, for instance, who are all planning and running the operations well. Mm -hmm. And so everybody is moving well. So if you have 10 different groups or 10 different units of industry moving in a certain direction, that's it. All Nigeria did was that they, when they sat back and realized that um, people that have even the, the much needed wealth do not understand and have the expertise of the industry, they began to look to. And that's why when I hear people say, ah, we are selling Ghanaian artists, I say, well, this is a very misguided uh, commentary. Because listen, um, you are having conversations with people that truly understand it. In the last few weeks, for instance, um, we've gone into partnerships with Columbia Records and Sony Music, and it's mm. a big conversation. Why? Because we are looking for the investment. We are not only looking for the investment, but you're looking for the machinery. Mm. You're looking to leverage a well oiled machinery to not only break through a talent in Ghana and consolidate, but really make them a global star. Mm. You don't have that. You don't have that. And Stoneway diagnoses the problem very well. You want to still move bits, 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 bits. It doesn't work like that anymore. Gone were the days when a hit could come as a result of chance. But today it's engineered. If I mm. tell you, look, the video for Olive the Boy, for instance, yeah. which we released today, cost not more, not anything less than twenty thousand dollars. Who is going wow. to pay that within the market for the young breakthrough star? Who? But you know, but you are, when you once you have conversations and with the people that understand it and have the much needed operations across the world, it's easier. Mm. If I tell you the number of people that flew into the country for the Wednesday unveiling for. Uh, what's it called? Olive, Olive the boy. boy. Yeah. Oh, that operation. Everybody saw the show. Everybody saw it, and they're like, "Oh, that's exceptional." The entire band, everything, mm -hmm. the the costuming and all of that. You should see the behind the scenes that went into just this small event yeah. to actually put him out. This is a whole operation. But like, do you think it's easy to get a Baba Sadiq on your team? I don't mm. have the time. Yeah. I've got big. The only way you can get me on the team if is the conversation is right. Yeah. If the ambition is right. So the thing I say to everybody in industry is that, look, let's begin to say less and do more. We are, everybody's talking, everybody's running around, everybody's not diagnosing the problem very well. Look, let's pause, think, look at it. This is not hard to crack. Mm. And that's why I, I, had gone, I had gone into like retirement. Oh, you've gone into retirement with what? I guess you mean artist management. Yes. Um, well, I, I hope that, okay, he's I realize back. that, ah, You've gone into retirement yes. with what exactly? Well, Artist management or, or music in general? No, generally, generally I was going into semi-retirement from industry just yeah. to concentrate fully on politics, mm -hmm. you know, my stuff and that. But yeah. sitting back, time around um, um, May, June, June, after the primaries, mm -hmm. and hearing all the conversation and seeing that I've got a wide network of individuals across the world, 
and we are almost always every time talking and engaging, I'm thinking, listen, we need to fill that void. And it yeah. shouldn't be only about me. It should be everybody else that really wants the growth of industry. Nothing stops, for instance, a coca to say, I've got a, 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 a wide network across the world. I'm going to put it at the expense of not only in there. Because, Bella, in creating value for the talent, I'm not only creating value for the talent, I'm also creating value for myself and industry and society. Mm. That's the, the mentality. You know, and so if you've got people that truly really look, Mavens, everybody is seeing the last two years, Mavens break Ira Star, Rema, Ruga, and take them to the world. Yeah. In 2019, a multi million dollar investment conversation with Kupenda Holdings. Kupenda mm. Holdings, through a TPG growth platform, had been investing in the likes of Spotify and Co. Mm. So they understand this space, they know it, they see the growth. There's everybody's attention in the last one week, Bella. Do you know who is here? Everybody is here. Yeah. So Everyone is here. Colombia is here. They are in Ghana. Colombia is here. Universal guys are here. Empire guys are here. Everybody is here. What, what, are, they, what, are, what are they here for? Because, I mean, there's, there's a spotlight on Africa. Okay. And Africa, Nigeria has actually taken the leap, but the world is looking for the next new, refreshingly different sound and talent. Mm. And they are seeing that in terms of the product side, Ghana has it. The mm. only thing that we lack is the much needed operation or machinery to take from um, Stone Boys or, um, and Wet to be able to power the talent. Yeah. They have the machinery. They have this particular uh, um, um, investment. So in the absence of that particular investment, what are we really to do? And when they hear, when they sit down and pay attention to us, make misguided comments that we are selling our artists, we are selling our artists, they look at it like, really? What do you guys want? Do you really want to break down the dance or do you want to spend the next five years agonizing? Okay. F final, word, final words before I, said, I, I let you go. Sorry not to cut you. But so you're saying that we should pause and restart. For the artists, what should be the first thing they should do? For everybody else, what should we do? Enough of the talk. We need to act. What's the first thing that everyone needs to do? Individually, look, there are too many talkers without nothing to show for it. We wake up, I've seen the same people talk for the past 10 years. And when you ask everybody else that, listen, listen, what truly is your footprint? What is your point? What is what, what are you consistent about? At least for some few of us, if I look from as your master just spoke about, mm. you will see a certain trajectory of growth. I mean, beyond working with Kaki, you see that in the industry, we went on to work with Viasat, you saw the value. Yeah. We went on to you saw the value. Everybody knows and attests to the value of three music. Everybody knows and attests to the value of Waterland. Now, full circle is on. So I'm not just looking at them. I'm agreeing with the likes of Stoneboy. I'm agreeing with everybody that. We need not only the investment, but we need expertise and the machinery to be able to not only break through talent in the market, okay. but consolidate the gains and truly break them to the, into um, um, and the global market. And that requires an operation that your market can't fund. It is not a, just a small $100,000 depot. Okay. This is a huge operation that really needs not only the investment, the machinery. If okay. I can ride on the back of Sony, if I can ride on the back of Empire, if I can ride, look, in the last one year, all your top breakthrough talents, all of them has had one distribution deal or a partnership of sort, everybody with a global major. Because you simply can't do it. They've built the system. What are you going to do? You want to reinvent the world, then you may as well just get your $300 million and start. Because right. it's, it's a operation. All right. And so, I say to industry that, I say to industry that time, for the misguided commentary is over. Okay. The focus is on Africa. Let's all say less and do more. Okay. I have just, I have moved away from even semi-retirement and concentrating fully on politics and now saying I want to at least give 30% of my time and my expertise and my wide network even to industry. Today, look right. at it. Look well, conversation with We're, we're glad you're back. We're glad you're back and you didn't leave us. But, but, but thank you so much. I see that you're doing some great stuff with sony music as well at the right time unfortunately there's no time now we would get back to you and get all the details on that i sent you a text as well please read it and respond thank you very much but thank you so much baba sadiq coca you didn't agree with something that he said earlier you see if you don't have your internal market right your external market is dead mm. they are products i mean let's use the four p's you need to have a right product for the right people at the right place with the right promotion within a certain market mm -hmm. once that market is well 
you now have a blueprint. Then you can say that, okay, I want to enter into this market. What are the weaknesses, the strengths and opportunities? Then you venture in. Some of us, like Sadiq, when, when you don't have an agenda that this is what we are supporting, mm -hmm. anything without this that is not focused on TV3, we are not into it. Okay. Because if we say, okay, everybody can do what they are doing and their, their success is what will propel us, we will never get there. Because what will be the definition of that success? You should define what you want and pick it up that this is our definition. And right now, we've asked everybody here, what is Ghana music? What do you call Ghanaian music? We don't. We don't have anything. We need to have an identity. Now, he's a music maker. Bring producers together and say, this is the agenda. That is where the investment start from. Because they will groom the artists who will sell the song. Mm. Then, after that, the promoters, you tell them what we are selling. Okay. You get me? We don't have that. Then you bring the marketers in who are now going to look for the sponsorship. Because it's a teamwork and everybody has a role to play. And in Ghana, that does not work. Okay. Because we don't trust anybody. We, even the artists singing, just... Everything is about them. We okay. need to have a focus. If we don't have that, all the trial lack will always be trial okay. lack. All right. Well, noted. But uh, just a quick tweet. So, Ikea Nipa, Tilly Ikea Nipa says that um, if Nigerians even leave Afrobeats for Ghana to take over, the genre won't survive beyond two years because we don't have an agenda. And this she said on the Twitter space yesterday. The full conversation is online at TV3 Ghana or 3 Entertainment GH. Um, just go check it out, listen to it, and let's see if we can now stop the talking and act because some very important uh, suggestions were made on that platform.